Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's an ombre-ish stack of boxes. How divine and cute is that? I love to make stacks of boxes. I make a lot of them in the run up to Christmas, but you know, we're the other side of Christmas now. Could be that you've got a birthday coming up or you've got baby on the way, which is kind of where my head was thinking with using this wonderful Hippo Happiness stamp set. It just speaks and shouts baby to me. Too cute, too, too cute. Um, and so that's why I chose the purples and because we have three and I could get a nice trio. So this is gorgeous grape. Highland Heather and Purple Posy with the matching designer series papers and obviously that Tricolore of ribbon, which is lovely. My stamping was done with Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather because we don't have a Purple Posy ink pad and I thought that was a lot of fun and I hope you like it. So my kind of ombre effect and it feels more ombre because obviously the designer series paper, although the background colour is the same, it just feels like it fades. So I'm doing it again, but in different colours and again going with the whole baby theme. But, you know, you might not know what the gender of the baby is going to be. I'm going green. I did consider yellow, but I felt I couldn't get enough depth of colour. So I'm going shaded spruce for my biggest box. I have already pre-made my Just Jade middle box and a Mint Macaron top box. So if I bring in the three colours as ink pads... You can see why I've chosen them. They tone beautifully. Let me just tip that away from my light. They tone so beautifully together. Right, oh, I don't need the Just Jade for the inking. So, the dimensions of these. I made this box, this particular set of stacked boxes. I've made loads and loads and loads. Please just simply go onto my blog and type in stack or stack of boxes and you'll find loads. But this one I made um, during Poodle's Advent Countdown, which started September. And yeah, I made it in Christmas paper, so I'm gonna remake it exactly the same set. So all of the measurements are on my blog. So click open the description bar below and you will be taken straight to this project on my blog, or obviously if you're watching this on my blog, the instructions are underneath the video. So regardless of the size of your cardstock base and cardstock lid, you will score your bases at two inches on all four sides, which is five centimetres on all four sides. And your lids you will score at one inch with a tiny ad adjustment, two and a half centimetres, tiny adjustment, which I'm going to demonstrate again on all four sides. So it's lovely. Yeah, I, th I just thought oh, I always make stacks for Christmas because that kind of feels like the time when we give more gifts than necessarily on a birthday. Um, and then I just thought, no, I want to make a stack of boxes for a birthday or a new baby or something like that. So, why not? So that's me scoring the base. And I said about adjusting, making an adjustment. So I want to score at one inch, but actually I don't. I want to score at 15 sixteenths of an inch. So it's not 2.5 centimetres, it's 2.3. But that's not a marking on my, on my scoreboard. So I literally move it away just a little hair of a whisper and that will give me a smaller area so like I say 15 sixteenths 2.3 centimeters and you just do it all the way around making that adjustment so on all four sides and so like I say it's the same score marks on all three of the boxes now you can't go smaller than that because it's this is the two by two inch cube uh, this one is three by three by two inches and this one will be four by four by three inches. You can go bigger, you just can't go smaller than that because it wouldn't follow the same um, pattern. Like I say though, I have done loads of different boxes so I have taken them smaller than that um, and I've taken them bigger. I've done five stacks, I've done three stacks lidded, three stacks enclosed. I've done rectangles, I did a rectangle set a couple of weeks ago and if you have an envelope punch board, I've done a bunch with those as well. I've even done two stacks but it, that didn't feel right. All stacks should be odd numbers. They shouldn't, there is no rule, that's just me. Right, so I'm going to show you on this how to, how to cut it and that will be the same for the lid but oh I've done it the wrong way around. It's going to be the same for the lid, you just won't be able to see very well because that's quite detailed paper 
I need the spots side out. So if I show you on the base, you will know how to do it. And again, exactly the same for all the boxes. The only one you would do is the smallest one. You'd take a little bit off there. You don't need to on the middle and the bottom box. And you just keep rotating round. There's something very impressive about a stack of boxes, which is why I love to make them, which is why you lot all love to see them and you tell me how much you love them. So, yeah. And they do make really good decor as well, actually. And I did suggest that for the Christmas boxes I made. You know, make them as a piece of home decor. Um, or even that pile of gifts under the Christmas tree that aren't actually gifts, particularly if you've got small folk in the house, they might be tempted to rattle, shake and listen. Having a stack under of, of non-presents but look like a present, always a great idea. Right, so I've done the two the same way and you will do all six of your boxes exactly the same way. It's the same method, same principle. So I'm going to put some glue on all of those tabs. My seal plus here. And the same on here. Oops. Just double checking I have got it the right way up. And you build the boxes exactly the same way. Base and lid, base and lid, base and lid for all three boxes exactly the same way. There we go. And then that, because I made that tiny little adjustment, will slip easily over my box without the sides buckling. Right, so just for the purposes of the fact that I'm going to be tipping in this and showing you, I'm going to put a blob of glue underneath my middle box. And that is just so that it can dry so that I can lift it up and move it around to show you. If you're giving this as a gift, don't do this bit. Um, oh, that, I squirted off to one side and I couldn't see what it was doing. Oops. Uh, too much glue. And that one on there. So I'm just going to put that off to one side and I'm going to put something semi heavy on the top so it dries. So I've got all three of the characters characters creatures I've got my lamb I've got my horse and I've got my hippo so I need to get all my pieces together so I need my hippo part one and part two I need my horse part one and part two so part one I'm calling part one is the solid image you can turn this one into a unicorn there is a little image here that turns it into a unicorn. I'm not going to do that. And then my lamb part one and part two. There is a butterfly as well actually, um, but I wanted these ones. So your solid image is stamped with the lighter colour of your pair. So I need small blocks. And the darker is stamped with, obviously, the darker of whatever pair it is you've got. I need another block that's that size. Two, three. There should be a fourth one. Here it is. And I'm just going to turn that around. Okay, so mint macaron. Oops, piece of whisper white. So I find light going first works better for me um, because we're die cutting these and I'm not going straight onto a project is that not that big a deal oh that was the wrong one 
and I'm going to stamp off that one. So I just get a slight variation of colour and I'm just going to lightly stamp off that one. So I almost get three shades. Okay, pop that away and come in with my shaded spruce. And this is probably where you're going to get the top of my head now. But there are bits that you can line up. And it's the noticeable things like the hippo's ears and his hooves. Do they have, is it hooves that they're called? Oh, I'm just showing my ignorance there. And I completely did that wrong. That's okay, I've got an emergency over here. Emergency side. So, and I will do the same here. Hmm. That's fine. And then my green lamb. And that's so cute. I didn't do that one quite right. That's not a problem. So, I'm going to come in back in with this mint macaron and get my hippo right. Do you know what? Maybe it is easier to do the detail part first. Yeah, it probably is. Should we have another lamb as well? Do you know what? Should I just do them all, the other two, all over again? This is what post-Christmas crafting will do for you. You forget to remember what you're meant to do in which order. So I want my lamb stamped off a little bit. Oh! <laughs> I've just done the outline image again. Oops! I wanted the solid stamped off a little bit. Well, at least I perfectly aligned that. That was impressive. <laughs> I'm making this look really hard. It's not. And where's my solid? There he is. My solid horse. Yes, much better. Now I've got to put faces on them. Oh, wish me luck. Because there's three different faces as well. Okay. So here's my diddy little boxes. So the lamb has got a little teeny tiny smiley face. So I might just do that while I've got them out. She's got sort of her eyes shut. She's cute. And then the horse has got like a sideways smile and he's also got nostrils so you have to line up the nostrils oh that was quite good and then our lovely hippo has got a very very smiley happy face and you line his nostrils up too except i can't see them so we're just hitting and hoping that was close enough too cute And then, of course, there are matching dies. Blimey, if I had a hard time lining these up with the stamps, I'm going to have fun with the dies, aren't I? Okay, good thing I have a magnetic platform. Unfortunately, I'm running out of space. So I've got stacks, two stacks on the go, and all sorts going on. All right, let me get these out. One horse, one lamb, and one hippo. And then lots of other shapes as well. So I'm using my magnetic platform. And probably most of it is off camera. So I've got plate number one, number two and number five. And give it a little bit of a bend if you've had it sitting for a while, not doing very much. But that's going to serve as a cutting plate. You don't need a bottom cutting plate. So I'm going to get my hippo lined up and then these two as well and like I say I do a better job of lining them up than I did stamping first time round 
oops nearly lost his ears there we go and then you do put a cutting plate over the top I have to say as I'm as I'm running these through the machine I'm not sure that green creatures were <laughs> green animals are the best idea they look a little bit on the poorly side <laughs> I was kind of going gender neutral. I was doing my best. The theory was there, but that's okay. <laughs> Please learn by my mistakes. I make mistakes, so you don't have to. <laughs> oh, well. Right. So I'm hoping this is dried enough. Yes, so I can tip it onto the side and you can see. So I want some ribbon. Oh, choices, choices. Oh gosh, I've got lots. I think I'm going to go with just jade because I haven't used that as an ink colour. But it is such a beautiful green. Oh my goodness. Using it with blends or using the blends in this colour are oh, just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just putting this round my stack. very much a statement gift oh my goodness if you were giving this to a new mum she'd think you were the best person ever particularly if you put a babysitting voucher in the top or something like that so I'm going to leave my tails quite long and then pop my little guys up with some dimensionals which are now under a pile of that is under the blue the purple stack and yeah, I probably wouldn't suggest green. I think the ombre is beautiful. And actually, you know what? If I was going to make this again, I in green, I might go leaves rather than green creatures. So... I still think it's adorable whatever the colours I think it's just utterly charming and divine and I absolutely love the ombre effect anyway I hope you like it too I hope you've made a stack if you've made a stack in the past let me know if you're going to make one of these stacks let me know too anyway thank you ever so much for joining me hope to speak to you very soon bye